Good morning, Mason Nation. I'm Crystal Moore. And I'm Tyler Byron, filling in for Britta Balsas this week. So, Crystal, have you seen this week's edition of Fourth Estate? I have. I actually have it right here. Yeah, very, very controversial photo and topic there. Yes, it is. This week's edition of Fourth Estate is about the controversial drug MDMA. Um, it features an article called Molly at Mason. So you guys should definitely check it out and get more details about that. Yeah, great, great story there by Fourth Estate. <laughs> great story. Um, in other news, jobs are hard to come by nowadays. With a pool of ap applicants that outnumbers the positions available, it has become more difficult than ever to find that perfect job. George Mason's Career Services recognizes this issue and wanted to support both the students and staff of the Mason community by hosting one of the largest career fairs in the Washington, D.C. area. In an article written by Mason writer Robert Hernan, he describes how the career fair held on October 2nd and 3rd attracted 2,000 job seekers and more than 150 employers. The career fair was held in Dewberry Hall, located on the bottom floor of the JC. Featuring 117 employers from nearly every major market, the job fair provided the perfect opportunity for Mason students to speak to employers about internships, even full-time positions with their respective companies. Robert Hernan spoke with Christine Cruzaverga, Director of University Career Services, who commented on the career fair by stating, Our career fair employers represent a wide range of industries at Mason. We encourage students from all academic backgrounds and classes to attend and network with regional and national employers. Some fun new features at the fair included a LinkedIn photo booth for students to get personal he professional headshots taken, a live Twitter feed for employers and students, hashtag Mason Fair, along with Learning Lounge in the lobby of Dewberry Hall to help students with last minute questions and preparation. For more information about career services and to check out when they will be holding their next career fair, please visit careers.gmu.edu. This past Friday night, in George Mason University's first home Atlantic 10 matchup, your George Mason women's volleyball team fell to the Billikens of St. Louis. In the very first set, Mason won by a substantial amount of 25 to 15, before losing the next three sets. With very few lead changes in the set, the Patriots are now needed to focus on continuing to hold on momentum and not having unnecessary mistakes. The loss drops Mason to a 5 and 12 record with a 1 and 2 record in conference, putting them in 8th place, two spots out of a conference playoff berth. However, Mason will have the chance to move up in the standings this weekend with two home games on Friday and Saturday against VCU and LaSalle, respectively. In other athletics news, the women's soccer team won their very first Atlantic 10 game with a 1-0 victory over St. Louis, thanks in huge part to sophomore Emma Starr, who had the game-winning goal. Also, this Friday, Atlantic 10 play will begin for the men's soccer team as they play host to Rhode Island. If you haven't visited the bottom, bottom floor of the Exploratory Hall recently, then you should definitely stop by and check out the brand new Visualization Lab. The lab displays three-dimensional, high-definition technology that is sure to be a treat for anyone interested in science or crime scene investigation. In an article written by Fourth Estate writer Jordan Bredlove, he outlines the story of the newly designed lab. The Visualization Lab has been in the works since construction began for Exploratory Hall in May. The lab is expected to be completed in 2014. Many of the devices and technology found in the Visualization Lab are the same type of machinery used by video game software, act, assess crime scenes, and diagnose diseases. In an effort to promote a higher technological environment at Mason, the Federal Bureau of Investigation donated computers to students interested in studying crime scene investigation. The Visual Lab features a realm of 3D technology including a projector, televisions, and the newly designed Oculus Rift, a gadget used by video game developers with two different eye displays. These eye displays produce separate images on each eye. This sort of technology, along with the use of he a head tracker, a device, that has a, de a device that has the ability to sense when the user of the Oculus Rift moves their head, can be used to assess crime scenes and the investigation into phobia therapy. The Visualization Lab will be ready for use during the spring semester. If you would like further information about the cool devices and technology that will be featured in the lab, please visit the George Mason website. And we'll be back after a quick commercial break with your event rundown. This week is the Turn Off the Violence Week. Each year since 1997, Wellness, Alcohol, and Violence in Education Services has sponsored a week for helping GMU work to end violence against women. One of the events for the week will be Take Back the Night, 
which will be at the North Plaza Clock Tower at 7.30 tonight. It is a rally and march followed by a reception and survivor speech. This week is Geek Week, and there are many geek-related events coming up. One of them is the Tron Disc Battle. It is an Ultimate Frisbee Night Tournament, which is taking place at the Rack Field on Thursday from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. To join, register at the website trondiscbattle.eventbrite.com. Tomorrow in the ballroom of the Hub, there will be a Firefly fan film screening, which will be followed by a Q&A with the director and producer, Michael Duggard. Any GMU Firefly fans should definitely check this out. That concludes today's Tuesday segment of Mason Cable News. I'm Crystal Moore. And I'm Tyler Byram. See you next time, Mason.